Now we we started talking about JDBC. I said JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. Then and I raised the question that how come a Java application talks to a database? Then I spoke about you know uh, Java gave some interfaces and uh, all those interfaces have been implemented by respective database vendors and there are some jar files they gave us they gave us some jar files and with the help of jar files we will be able to talk to them we will be able to talk to the respective databases now here we go So yesterday it was day 13. It was no no no. It was the recording number. It was day 14. So let me create a package called day 15 now. Day 15 and what the topic? KDBC. I would like to discuss. But as I said earlier that the Sun Microsystem has given only interfaces and they have not provided any implementations. So being a Java programmer, I have no clue how to connect to a Oracle. Being a Java programmer, I have no clue how to connect to any other database. What I am familiar with is the API, the, the, way, the API which Java has published. And that API got a lot of interfaces and those interfaces are implemented by respective database vendors. And we spoke about the different types of drivers, one, two, three, four, but we know that the type 4 driver is implemented in Java. That is, all database vendors, they implemented the interfaces in Java itself. And after implementing the interfaces in Java, they gave us some jar files. They gave us some jar files. So, I should, I should use those jar files in my project. Without them, I won't be able to connect. So, I'm not including them in the path so that we see what is the error message and once I get the error message then I will add them to the path. So this is a package day.15.jdbc and here I create a class. What is the class first? Let me name the class as Oracle Database Connection. Oracle Database Connection. When I, I let it be the class. Then within this, I would like to define a method public. The method name is get the connection. The method name is get the connection. But every method should have a return type, right? Every method should have a return type. And here comes the return type connection. If you see what package it belongs to, java.sql. So I got a class and the class got a method. The method is labeled as get connection. You can choose any name of your choice. I have opted for get connection. And uh, what is the return type of this class of this method? It's a connection. For this connection, it's an interface in the Java.sql. 
because I am not familiar with the I am not familiar with the implementation of the Java uh, implementation of the Java dot SQL API. Who is who is implementing these interfaces? The database vendors. But these database vendors are they helping with the Java code or are they helping you with the dot class files? If you remember yesterday when I extracted the jar files, when I extracted the jar files, what did you find in the jar files? You find dot class files. You don't find dot Java files. But can you read dot class files? No. So they gave you the implementation dot class files. So you cannot read them to understand what is happening. Right. Now here we go. What are the steps involved in JDBC programs? So if you if you might have gone through the PPT which I attached last day, the steps to the steps involved in JDBC programs. So let me write it down for you. The step one will be load a driver. Step two will be establishing a connection. Load a driver, establish a connection. Then comes create the query. Then execute it. Then play around with the result. Whatever you want to do with the result. Then comes close the resources open whatever the resources you have opened it you just need to close it so in, in this activity we will not be using all the six steps I'll be just using the first two loading a driver and establishing a connection but how do I load a driver here is the syntax class dot for name if you see it's not a keyword class it's a class name class the C is in uppercase letter if it is in lowercase letter it's gonna be a keyword but the C is in not in uppercase letter the C is in low sorry the C is in not in lowercase letter it is in uppercase letter so it's a class it belongs to which package? Java.Lang. So as you know, Java.Lang is optional to load. Java.Lang is optional to load. And here it comes. Class.Furney. Loading a driver. So I'm connecting to the Oracle. So Oracle dot jdbc dot driver dot oracle driver so with my experience I, re I found that oracle driver is a class implementing the driver interface oracle driver is a class implementing the interface driver Oracle driver is a class implementing the interface driver. Oracle driver is a class implementing the interface driver. This is this is how the driver is loaded. Loading a driver. But what is the exception you see? You are trying to load a driver. Now what do you mean by loading a driver? What do you mean by loading a driver? Nothing but creating an object of the class. What, what does that imply? It's nothing but creating object of class 
of class Oracle driver here. Or you can say creating object of the class specified in double quotes. Then if, if, you if you take the mouse over, it shows that the compiler, the compiler is forcing you to handle an exception. The compiler is forcing you to handle an exception. Then the kind of exception is a checked exception. Right? So there are two types of exceptions we, we discussed about, we discussed earlier, checked exception and, and, and unchecked exception. If your compiler forces you to handle, then it's a checked exception. So I click on that uh, error message and it gives me two solutions. Either do a throws or do a try catch. I would go with try catch. So one job is done, loading a driver. What is the second step? Second step is to establish a connection. Second step is to establish a connection. Loading a driver is done. The second step is to establish a connection. How do we establish a connection? Look at this. Driver manager. Now driver manager is what? If you observe, it's a C. It's a class. Driver manager dot get connection and there are different forms of get connection. It's an overloaded method. Get connection is an overloaded method. Get connection with one string argument. Get connection with one string and one properties argument. And a get connection with three string arguments. So I go with the last one and if you see what is that? URL user and the password. A URL is where exactly your database is lying and the username and password to connect to a database. To connect to the Oracle database which is installed on my machine, the username is system. At the time of installation it will it will ask you for a password. Uh, I, I, I shared I think you, uh, yesterday I shared with one of the resource, you know, like the Oracle database, which is 10G Express Edition. So when I when 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 you try to install that 10G Express Edition, it asks you for a password. The password is you can choose anything of your choice, but the username is system. Then here comes the URL. So where is that URL? Here JDBC colon oracle colon thin colon at the rate localhost colon 1521 colon xe xe stands for and uh, express edition of the database right so what is express edition what is enterprise edition enterprise edition is your complete package express edition is only a few features so your express edition is only for training purposes you cannot use it on the production Express Edition, you can use it only for the training, not on the production. Whereas Enterprise Edition can be used for production. But Enterprise Edition is not free. So you loaded a driver and you try to establish a connection. The get connection is an overloaded method. It takes three arguments. The first argument is URL. The second argument is the username and the password. Establishing a connection. Now, again a checked exception, SQL exception, what do you want? You want to do a throws or you want to do a try catch or you want to add a catch to the existing try. I want to add a catch to the existing try and return the connection. Simple. Right, so loading a driver and establishing the connection is done. Now let me test it. I'm defining a separate class called test connection. 
with the main method. I'm defining a separate class called test connection with the main method. No, no, no. I, I will, I will discuss another example for MySQL. It's not saying the you means these two things will change us. The driver name, URL will change. The arguments only will change. The rest of the story will be same. Only the arguments differ. I will help you with the arguments. Now here comes your test connection, and. Uh, I, I here the get connection is an instance method so when it is an instance method it depends on object so instead I make it as a static so that you know I can call it easily without creating any object look at this oracle database connection dot get connection then I, I I'll check what is that if, if it is not null if it is not null, then I say connection established. Else, else I say unable to establish the connection. Now let me run this. Yeah, you see the message. There was an exception. What is the exception? Class not found. Which class is not found? Oracle dot JDBC dot driver dot Oracle driver. The package name itself is suggesting that this 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 class doesn't come with Java library. What is the package name? It's oracle dot database dot. If it is starting with oracle dot, then it doesn't come with your Java library. It doesn't come with your Java library. So what I was trying to do here, when I say loaded driver, I said, what is that? What do you mean by when I say loaded driver? Creating object of the class specified in the double quotes. In the double quotes, what is the class inspired? Oracle driver. So we are trying to create object of the oracle driver, which you are your JVM is unable to locate it. Why JVM is unable to locate it? Because it doesn't come with your Java library. It doesn't come with your Java library. Then how do you do it? Simple. Right click on the project. Right click on the project. Build path. Configure build path. Build path, configured build path. So yesterday I emailed jar files to you. Then you can download it and you can put it wherever you want. Then you can refer it. How do you refer it is? You right click and use a build path. Then you say libraries. Then after saying library, then you have the buttons. Choose add external jar. Then if you have it on your desktop, Please do refer it. So you download from the uh, email and you can put wherever you want and you just refer the location. But I have a database installed on my computer. So I know in the C drive or if you like C got right is a folder and APP Oracle product 10.2.0 server JDBC lib then you got this OJDBC then ok Right. Now we try the test connection program again. 
Now this time you see the message as connection established. Connection established. So we learn how do we connect to a Oracle database. So similarly, we'll, we will learn, uh, you know, we see the options for connecting to MySQL. I'm creating another program. When I say MySQL database connection. So I, I, I would, don't like to write from the scratch. I just go here and uh, pick the complete method from the Oracle database connection or Oracle database connection, whatever you would like to call it as. Here comes the driver name. So the driver name changes here in the double quotes. Com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver. Then one more option here. JDBC colon mysql colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3306 is the port number on which MySQL runs but as for Oracle it is 1521 then here you need to create you use a database name yesterday I, I demonstrated how to create a database it's Zuand right so I create a database called Zuand so I'm passing it then username and the password was what root and the root. Now I try to test this connection. You see there are only very small changes. Right. The only two changes are class dot for name and driver manager dot get connection. So the driver name was different and the URL username and the password are different. And here after 3306 you see something called Zivan. The Zivan represents your database name. Which yesterday I demonstrated how to create a database. Create database database name. This is only for MySQL. In Oracle you don't need to do that. So let's go back and test it. So I have a line. I just comment that. Then I write again. Connection. Connection is. get connection. Again you see an exception message. The driver not found. The driver not found. Then I what I need to do? To right click on the right click on the project build path configure build path Again libraries, add external jar. Now this this MySQL connector doesn't come with your My, MySQL installation. The MySQL connector, it doesn't come with your MySQL installation. You have to download it explicit externally. So uh, yesterday I downloaded and I have it on a desktop. So I'm referring it from my desktop. And I say OK. That's it. When I try to run this, at this time it should get connected. Yes. You see the message, connection established. Right. Now, so we learned how to establish a connection with the database. So we, we, see, we saw two databases, one is the Oracle and other one is your MySQL. Now what next, right? There is one more way of loading the driver. There is another way of loading the driver. So let me demonstrate that. So again, uh, what a package. I just want to create a class. Mm, 
when I say load driver, or what I say, let, let's say uh, my uh, Oracle database connection, or let, let's just keep it as database connection. So Then again, I, I would like to define the method. Connection will be the return type and uh, get connection. So what is the first thing? Load a driver, right? Well, let's see how do I do that. Look at this part. Driver is an interface in Java. Driver is an interface in Java. Now can I create object for interface? No. But what I can do is I can create object for the implementation class. Who are the implementation classes from Oracle? This is the implementation class. From Oracle, this is the implementation class. I'm creating the object of the class and storing inside the interface. Let's understand. You can only do this after build path. You can only do this after build path. Without build path, you cannot do this. Because if you want to create object of the class, then what you need to do? You should have, see, this is something like, you know, you are trying to use a, you are trying to create an object of the class. But this class should exist in the library, right? So if you, you should add it to the build path. What exactly I mean to say is, right click build path configure build path now you you don't see any compile time error in this line number 12 but let me introduce the compile time error build path configure build path libraries you see this oracle jar file here i remove it now you see the uh, red color mark it says it don't recognize the package or jdbc. It doesn't come with your Java library. So you cannot create object of it unless and, unless, unless and until you have it in the library. So let me go to the build path, configure build path, libraries, external jar, then it's in the computer, Oracle drive, sorry, C drive, Oracle, app oracle product 10.2.0 and the server jdbc lip pick the jar okay no compile time error now so this is option right loading a driver is done then what we are left with? Establish a connection. No, loading a driver is not completed yet. We just created an object. We just created an object. Then there is one more step. Driver manager dot register driver. You want to know what, what is going to happen with this? Look at this. Register the given driver with the driver manager. A newly loaded driver class should call the method register driver to make itself known to the driver manager. To make itself known to the driver manager. And again you have a except, uh, unhandled exception. So it's a checked exception. Take the mouse over, click, and turn on with right touch. Loading a driver is done. Then comes establishing a connection. Then comes establishing a connection.
establish a connection will be the routine pin there will be no change in it driver manager dot get connection got a password you got a username then the url then when you want to test it the same code stuff comment this out yeah yeah any questions on what i covered so far all right then we we'll learn how to establish a connection now let's speak about how do i store data into the database how do i read data from a database and how do i delete and how do i update so what was the table which we created last day it was student right yeah. so let me let me create a class and we call those classes as daos we class those classes as dao i'll tell you why i'm naming it as a dao dao stands for data access object dao stands for data access object right. now why we call it as a data access object we refer it as because it involves only those operations it was only those operations which manipulate or read data which manipulate or read data so what are the operations you would like to add i would like to insert a record i would like to insert a record then i would also like to delete a record so in order to insert the data into the student table in order to insert the data into the student table right there are plenty of options so we don't have a class called student right let me create it and what are the attributes yesterday we had only two attributes id and then we do the right click source getters and setters
and uh, when you want to delete a record you delete a record based on one primary key and when you want to obtain a record obtain, again you obtain a record on what basing on primary key you give the primary key and you get the record or when you want to get all the records when you want to get all the records when you want to get all the records then it returns an array list of type student when i say select all Now these are the operations I would like to fill now. You have an insert, you have an insert with student argument, and you have a delete, but when you want to delete, what do you need? You just need a primary key to delete it, right? So we did yesterday, delete from student where id equal to. So then when it comes to selection also, select student, select star from student where id equal to. And when you want to do all, you don't need any argument. Because select star from student. You don't need any input value. So we're going to see each one. First, let's get started with the insert. So, what are the operations involved in a JDBC program? What are the operations involved in a JDBC program? Load a driver. Establish a connection, create the query, execute the query, play around with the result, close the resources open. First two steps are already finished. I don't want to do it again. So what I do smartly is, I make use of the code which is already returned. I make use of the code which is already returned. I can choose any program. I can choose database.get connection or I can choose oracle database connection.get connection or I can choose mysql database connection.get connection. So any any get connection I can use to obtain the connection. So I don't need I, I don't need to do this again here. Load a driver, class dot for name, driver manager dot get connection. Because this is something a repeatable code. This code is something reusable code, right? Because you also need for inserting a record. You also need for inserting a record. You also need for deleting. You also need for retrieving. You also need for retrieving all. And why should I do it again and again and again? So I have written them separately. I have written the logic to obtain the connection. I have written the logic to obtain the connection separately. Now I am using it over here. This I call the method database connection dot get connection to get the connection. So instead of writing loading a driver, establishing a connection and doing the try catch, I'm writing a single line to obtain the connection. Now connection is obtained, then you need to prepare the query. So to prepare the query, who is helping statement? Where statement comes from? This comes from Java or SQL. Java dot SQL. You need to use interface. Now you look at this. Statement equals to connection dot create statement. So what happens when you say connection dot create statement? It returns the 
ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटेशन क्लास ऑफ इंटरफेस स्टेटमेंट सो वट इज स्टेटमेंट इट्स एन इंटरफेस सो कैन वी ग्रेट ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर इंटरफेस नो बट वेन आई से कनेक्शन डॉट सी एट स्टेटमेंट वॉट इट रिटर्न इट रिटर्न द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटेशन क्लास ऑफ द इंटरफेस स्टेटमेंट राइट वट इज स्टेटमेंट इट्स एन इंटरफेस to that interface you will have an object see the ob statement uh it was the object used for executing a static sql statement and return the result it produces i'll tell you what exactly it means now when you say connection dot create statement what you get if you get the object of the implementation class of the interface statement now it is giving you some except, uh, unhandled exception when it's a checked exception try to handle it then loading a driver is done establishing a connection is done you you have a statement now focus here it state right so what it said about the statement what it said about the statement it is used for executing the static sql statement so let's see what exactly it means statement dot execute not execute i'll be using i'll use execute update statement dot execute update when i write the query insert into what was the table name what was the table name we have oh in oracle i don't have a table right yesterday we created a table where my sql so insert into table name table name was student values the first one was the id right so 1001 1002 is there already so i'm putting 1003 so you understood why we call it as a static sql sql statement see the object used for executing a static sql statement you see here you are putting the values in the query itself you are putting the value in the query itself if you run this if you run this method you only can insert 1003 and kalyan but if you want to insert another set of values if i want to insert 1004 and some xyz i need to modify this program that is the reason this, this year when i when i take the mouse over the statement it says hey you the help of statement you can execute a static sql statement but you have no other option do this you need to go back and modify the program only then what is this state execute update returns it returns a non zero integer it returns a non zero integer if query is successfully executed it returns a zero if the query is unsuccessful the execute update method it returns an integer it executes a given sql statement which can be a insert update or delete all right or an sql statement that returns nothing all right so how can you say uh, okay this met yeah that returns nothing this method cannot be called on okay fine leave this stuff right. so what exactly here this is what you need to focus on either one the row count for sql data manipulation language or zero for sql statements that returns nothing so i'll tell you what exactly he mean here if you get it returns a non zero value 
if insert or update or delete happen delete successfully happen if it is failure then it won't return it it will be zero only all right it returns zero if you execute any other statement any other query if any query other than insert update delete so when when you are running insert update delete you are expected to get non zero integer and when you are running anything other than that you will have zero only so since i since i executed what insert so what is my expectation non zero right so i return status okay and one more interesting thing was one more interesting thing was exception now for time being i'm printing the message here but i'll come back to this later for time being i'm printing the exception message here but i come back to it later now i got return status right and the what i was talking about interesting thing as i said whenever you open the resources you are expected to close it so here i go so before i before i close uh, uh, sorry uh, what are the things i need to close only state statement and connection so statement dot close as we know the close method also throws an exception so in the finally block also handle try catch and uh, i already discussed before you close the resource ensure whether it is open or not if it is open then you close it otherwise you don't need to now also close the connection it's done now what next let me write a class test dao with the main method then i create object of the dao class then on the dao class object i'll call the insert method if that insert method is not equal to 0 then i say record inserted else i say record not insert record insert we can we can go to the db and check it's my sql then root then i should get into the database i already created it now i can say what is the database table name 
Yeah, you see 1003 Kalyan. Now, I was trying to say about, you know, static SQL. Now, if I want to insert 1004 and Karan, I need to modify the Java program. But this is something not possible. You cannot, you cannot go back and modify the program. You cannot go back and modify the program to execute another values, right? To insert another values. That doesn't make sense. Right. So we have a solution to it that I discuss in the next program. So we just, you just learn how to do it with a statement. Now let's see how to do it with the other one. So I pick this entire code because I, I don't want to type it again and again. Now instead of, ins I have another insert method with a parameter. I have another insert method with a parameter. So but here, I am replacing the statement. I am replacing the statement with prepared statement which is from java.sql. You need to be very careful when you choose this. You see a lot of prepared statements here. Statements also you see a lot. So you have a prepared statement. Not much change, there is a slight change only. Then here we go. Prepared statement is connection dot not create statement now. Connection dot prepared statement. Now within that double quotes you write string argument. That's nothing but your query. Insert into table values. How many values does the table need? Two. So two question marks. So you need to set the values for the question mark before you say execute. What is your first value? It's an integer. So first question mark is an integer. From where do you get that? You have a student object, right? From the student object you say get id. Then prepared statement dot set string. Prepared statement dot set string. Second question mark. Then comes student dot get name. Then comes here prepared statement dot execute update that's it we are done in while closing it's not a statement it's prepared statement if null not equal to prepared statement then prepared statement dot close if null not equal to connection connection dot close so in the place of statement, I opted for prepaid statement. Then these are the only three lines of changes. You say connection dot prepaid statement and it takes a string argument that is nothing but your SQL query. And you leave question marks wherever you need to pass values. And to those question marks, you set the values later. Then you say execute update. Now how do I run this? Now from the main method, I need to pass a student object. So I'm creating a student object. Then I set the ID for him. Then I set the name to him. Then you call DAO dot what happened? Oh, we need to create object for DAO too. Because I commented in the previous case. Then on the DAO you call the insert method with string argument. Sorry, student argument. And what it returns? It returns an integer. Then the same routine old stuff. If it is not zero, record inserted, otherwise not. Test the 
Oh, you have an exception here. Can you see what is that? Duplicate entry for 1004. Oh, we already have 1004 in it. Oh, we already have, right? 1004 was current. So you see, if this is smart enough, it will tell you what is the error message. Duplicate entry for key primary. Primary key cannot have a duplicate. Let's pass another one. Record insert. Yeah. A any questions on the two programs which I completed so far? Uh, Arun, all the um, uh, everything you did was for MySQL, right? It, it is, it's, it's up to you, right? So if you want to go for Oracle, if you look at the program, the way I design, what is this, what is the connection I'm calling, get connection? For, I'm um, calling my it MySQL. MySQL database connection. So it is, it is working on the MySQL. If you just change it to Oracle database connection, it also works on the Oracle database, but a table should exist in the Oracle database. I changed it to Oracle or Database create, Connection, right? Or we can create a table from here, from the Java yeah, we, program? We, from Java program also, you can create a table. Okay. Right, but, 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 but one thing we need to understand is, table creation using a program doesn't make sense. Because to design a program, first a table should exist, right? Because the okay. development life cycle, it starts this way. Requirement gathering, then design. And during your design phase, then also design a DB schema. Okay. Then that, then you start writing the programs to manipulate the data. So okay. normally, so so you can also create a table using a Java program, but it is not recommended. So here goes. This is my Oracle. When I connect to it, yeah. Let me check whether I have a table called Student or not. I should have one. Oh, yeah, I have a table called student. You got ID, name, only two variables. Then I can also do this. Yeah. Now I am using Oracle database connection. Look at this. It should go there too. Record insert. Select start from student. 1005 Arun. Oh, one Arun and 1005 Aruna. One, it was already existing one record. Mm. So you added a second record to it. 1005 and Aruna. Okay. So the only and thing I did was only one line, right? In the DAO program, instead of using, in the DAO program, instead of using MySQL database connection, I just switched it to Oracle database connection and that solved all the problems. Okay. Right. Uh, can you tell me how did you read, uh, reach to that command prompt of SQL? I have downloaded the Oracle but I have not tried the command oh, did prompt. You, did you install it? I have, yeah, installed it and then a browser window opened where I could okay, run my fine. SQL. Okay. From there also you can do that. Okay. Here, do you see something for, okay, if you don't have any options, you, this is your place, right, where you type the command, SQL uh -huh. plus. Okay. When you do SQL plus, it gets open. Okay. And it asks for okay. the username. And you can enter the username. I said username is system. And uh, mm -hmm. password is, yesterday by installation, it might have prompted you for password. Mm -hmm. Whatever the password you entered, you can just type it. Okay. 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 And even from the browser also you can do it. Hmm. All programs. Then you see down. Oracle database. And you see database home page. Oh. It's a bit tiny. Then it asks for the username and password. 
Okay. Then you can put your credentials here. This is much user friendly. Mm. And uh, you have a lot of options here. You pick this SQL. Mm. Yes. And pick the SQL commands. Then you can write your command. Whatever your command you want to write. Select start from and uh, you have a run button. You see the output down. Mm, okay. That's it, right? Okay, yeah. Thank you, Arun. All right. So we did a uh, program. So understand, this, this is the significance of writing separate class to obtain the connection. Right. I have written a separate class to obtain the connection. Now, if I want to switch the database, I just need to replace this particular line and nothing in the program. So loading a driver is done, establishing a connection is done. So I will leave this delete for you. All right. Finish it off. Then let me discuss this. Uh, select also, I will leave it for you. I will be discussing the select all. But you cannot do select without knowing the select all. So let me discuss select all. All right. Here we go, select all. So what is that? As usual, the same steps. Loading a driver. Establishing a connection. How do we load a driver and how do we establish a connection? How do we load a driver and how do we establish a connection? Here we go. Loading a driver and establishing a connection is already done. So you just pick it up. So here the query changes. Select star from student whatever the database. So let be consistent. I'll go with MySQL. Then here, what are you going to see? I'm going I'm to need of result set. Now, what is this result set is, whenever you run the select query on the command prompt, you might have observed here. When I did the select query, you get something like a table structure. So when you run a select query, you get a table structure. To, to store that table structure, we depend on result set. Repeat statement dot execute query. I'm calling the method if you see execute query and that gives you result set. Now, first I should allocate memory for result set. I allocate memory for result set if null not equal to result set, then I allocate the memory to it. I allocate the memory for array list because if there is no records there is no point in allocating memory so I'm checking whether it is null or not if it is not null then I allocate the memory for array list after allocating the memory to the array list I should store all the records into the database so if you observe here how do I check whether there are records first it is not null 
Then I say result set dot next. What it returns? Boolean. If there is a record, if there is a record, it returns boot true. If there is no record, it returns false. Then I'm creating a student object inside this. Then I just set the ID of the student. From the result set, get integer, which is in the column 1. Get the integer in the column 1. Then I know that in the column 2, what do I have? In the column 2, what do I have? String. So get the string from column 2. So if you observe carefully what is happening. Every record is stored into a student object. When I say every record, that is nothing but every row. I get the first row. First row got ID and name. So the ID I stored into the student ID. And name I stored into the student name. Now this student object, I will add it to the array list. I will add it to the array list. Now, when this cycle is completed, when the loop is completed, all the records, when the loop is completed, all the records will get into what? When the loop is completed, all the records will get into the array list in the form of students. Then I return it. In the final leave block, I also need to close result set. In the previous cases, we didn't do it because there was no result set. Now in this case you have a result set, so it's better you close it. That's it, done. Now again you need to test it. You need to test it here. How do you do it? Create a DAO object. Then on that object, call the method select all. And that returns an array list. Array list of type student. Then we all know how do we print the data from array list. So, so student dot get id then so, so student dot get name. end of get name. You see all the records being printed. Any, any question on this part or is it clear? Yeah, Arun, I was uh, thinking that in, when you try to select everything, uh, can we use the statement uh, object instead of the prepared statement yes. object? Yes, yes, you can do that. Because there is no question mark involved, you can simply right. work with the statement. Okay, thank you. 
So let's look at this uh, select with ID also. Uh, yeah, I think you guys can give a try instead of I discussing that. Okay, so let me discuss something else. Now here, if you observe, I'm checking whether the result set is null or not, right? I'm checking whether the result set is null or not. If it is not null, then I'm allocating the memory for ArrayList. If it is not null, then I'm allocating the memory for ArrayList. Instead, I have another option. Instead, I have another option. I'll tell you the other option. Prepaid statement is connection dot prepaid statement with three arguments. Uh, we got first argument. The first argument is your query. So let's start from student. Whereas your second argument is result set dot type underscore scroll underscore you, you can just go uh, look at the API to know more about this. I just say I pick one of them scroll sensitive. Alright. Normally your result set is just just give me a minute. So your result set your result set is moves in only one direction. If you look at the while loop, you are saying result set dot next. That is it moves in only one direction. But when you say scroll, your result set is scrollable. Your result set is scrollable. It can move in both the directions, forward as well as backward direction. Your result set can move in both the direction, forward as well as backward direction. Alright, so like iterator and list iterator. Iterator can move only in one direction, whereas your list iterator can move in both the directions. So here when you use, by default it is forward. By default the result set is forward. But you can make it scrollable with the help of this constant. Result set dot type underscore sensitive. Or you can use insensitive also. Then there is one more. Concurrent. Read only. So your result set is only for the reading purpose. By default it is read only only. By default the result set is one unidirectional or forward only and read only. And you have the options to change it to scrollable. That's what I did here. And I also have another option to change it to update. But I am not interested in update now. So you have a read option, you have an update option. But I am not interested in the update. I am only interested in the read now. Now what I do here is, I am checking whether it is result set is null or not. Instead, I can check with this. Hey, is this result set dot next? Then it confirms that there are records. When you say result set dot next, I tell it becomes a boolean. I just result set dot next becomes a boolean. So it confirms whether there is a record or not. So when it confirms whether there is a record or not, I allocate memory to the array list. I allocate memory to the array list. Now after allocating the memory to the array list, then what I am doing? Then I do this stuff. So I'm not checking whether the result set is null or not. Instead, I'm using the scroll option. All right. And I'm doing this. Now, if you see, I run the program code. Oh, I didn't do that result set, right? Let me do that. Result set is prepared statement dot execute query. What happened? You see one record missing, right? 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, but you don't see 1001. Why? Because you said result set dot next. So let me take it through this. You see that. 
the result set dot next it moves the cursor forward one row from the current position and result set is initially positioned before the first row so your result set is before the first row when you say next it points to the first row so after saying next the moment you say next it goes to the first row but what are you doing again you say next so from first row it goes to the second row that is you ignored your first row so what i do is result set dot before first then it goes back when i say result set dot next it move forward when i say before first after moving forward allocating the memory i am asking it to go back again i am asking it to go back before the first element then if it goes back before the first element then again it starts with the first element now this time you see the result 1001 all stuff so the the reason in bringing up this discussion is to tell you that the result set is scrollable you have the option to make the result set as scrollable by default it is forward only and uh, it is read only but with the help of this constant one can make the result set scrollable as well as updatable but i didn't discuss updatable now i just discussed the scrollable option so the update option and discuss in the next class so keep uh, to try to complete this delete and uh, select and you can work out more examples if you are interested to yeah any questions on today class or probably yesterday's class or maybe before that all right if if no questions i would like to stop here and we will continue in the next class that is on monday evening oh i'm sorry yes um, yeah hi everyone whenever you are checking that uh, something is equal to null or not we are putting the null first null not equal to result set null not equal to is there Perfect. any difference if it yes it, it it makes a bit of difference but it's not completely logical right uh, it's it's only it's only a caution actually i'll tell you the reason for it now imagine if i do something like this all right there is no there is no logic there is no reason behind it it's only like you know it, it's a good practice there is no logical reason behind it now suppose uh, i say result result set dot get next or uh, you know it's not a result set which makes sense let's say student now why do we do null checks to avoid null pointer exception right mm -hmm. yeah we do null checks to avoid null pointer exception now imagine if i do something like this the student not equal to null this is fine if student is null you don't get inside if student is not null all right uh, then you get inside right yeah all right and uh, if student is null null not equal to null condition fails but imagine when you say you are trying to check whether the name is null or not okay what are you trying to do here you are trying to check whether the name of the student is null or not right yeah now in that case if the student itself is a null see i'm not talking about get name is null student itself is a null then what happens you will again get a null pointer exception here see, i command this two lines okay i also command this now what is here the student is null right yeah but what i'm trying to avoid i am trying to avoid that null pointer exception so i am checking the null condition right mm -hmm. now you see you still get a null pointer exception here you see the null pointer exception you get a null pointer exception because you are habituated to usage of this kind of 
student dot get name not equal to null but in this practice you forgot that student itself is a null when a student itself is a null oh, okay. you call a method on null but if you if you follow this practice instead of this Oh, still you see that exception, right? Line number 129. Yeah, I mean, this, this was, uh, uh, there is some reason, I'm not sure, but this is what I was thinking all these days, to avoid this kind of stuff. Okay. But this, this, is, this is a good practice to test this way, and uh, let me figure out, but this is what the standard convention they follow. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then, thank you. Right. Yep, uh, if, if, if no other questions, we'll stop here, we'll catch you in the next one. Right, thanks everyone.